And now we have the most thought provoking question yet. One that took me months to ever even consider how to answer. Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're gonna to be reading your engineering questions, exploring the best parts of a few engineering fields, figuring out what actual jobs you can get with these degrees, where and how to land internships, and a ton of other debauchery. So in case you don't know me, I'm Joe. I've been through community college, got my bachelor's in electrical engineering. I was a lab technician for a year, physics and electrical engineering tutor for over two years, was a president of the CubeSat academic club at my school, and now have been a radio frequency engineer for almost two years. So all these questions that I'm about to answer have come from my main channel, Engineering insiders but if you have any questions of your own make sure to just drop them in the comment i'll try to answer them there or make another video like this one if you like it now without further ado let's get right into it can you please do a comparison between computer mechatronics also can computer engineering get into robotics field in terms of designing robots so computer engineering you're going to use the circuitry and programming to accomplish things like designing little robots designing little computers designing hardware for computers and mechatronics does cover those two areas of electrical and software, but they also throw mechanical into the mix. And their designs are typically like a robotic arm that uses electronics to send signals to and from actuators to move the arm and computer programming to decide on what to do with the arm at what time. Like the Boston Dynamics robot has to take in everything it's seeing, decide, oh, I'll jump on this, jump on this, do a backflip. That's the processor behind the scenes. And computer engineers are very adept at programming processors. So there's one application of computer engineers entering robotics. So similarly, Pluto here asked if a mathematics degree with a good portfolio can get them into computer engineering which they absolutely can all that hiring managers really want is someone that can do the job well and fit in the company culture those degrees and accolades help applicants stand out but if you are an amazing prospect and you really know the technology and you have everything down you will get a job there's no question about it when you're done here check out this linked video to find out how to be the best engineering prospect and get that job no matter where you're coming from. So can a certified engineer in this field officially call themselves a Mechatron? Yes, Mechatronics engineers are Mechatrons now. Thank you, Cody. Hi, I just wanted to know if we should do a bachelor's in robotics and then master's in mechatronics or the other way around. Now, of course, there isn't one answer to this, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter all that much. What you need to do is to look at the curriculum of both and figure out which one aligns better with where you want to be. Now, if you don't know where you want to be yet, then take the more general major first, which depending on your university might be different. And then after you're done with that bachelor, master in either one, whatever is more specific on what you want to do. So you start broad and then narrow in on what you want to do with your masters, because that is a lot more niche and specific work. Any internships for freshers in this domain? So this was commented on my embedded systems video, but I wanna give general advice on how to do this for any field. Um, I do have a whole video on it, I'll link it in the description. But ultimately, no matter what your field, you want to one, have relevant experience, and two, have a great showcasing of that experience. So you have relevant projects and a nice clean resume and online portfolio, for example. These projects can be class projects, personal projects, academic club projects, which I highly recommend. But the other side is finding the actual job, to which I'd highly recommend LinkedIn and job fairs through your school. But you want to find as many internships that you think could be useful to you. See if you have any connections at that company and then apply your heart out. Now, again, more details in that other video linked in the description. All right. I was curious about aerospace engineering and now I am terrified of it. What if I fail to do a certain product? What if I fail to do anything, everything? So whether new or old engineer, we all struggle with this. It is imposter syndrome. Basically, you think you're not good enough for the job, but this is almost always silly. As long as you're trying your hardest to accomplish your tasks at work and do them efficiently, your managers will see this. They hired you for a reason. Expand and grow from that point that you got hired and make yourself more useful as often as you can, and then you will have nothing to worry about. And now we have the most thought-provoking question yet, one that took me months to ever even consider how to answer. Can someone please help me get Christian a girlfriend? No, but jokes aside, this is a funny comment on my aerospace video. Please go like his comment to support our homie. 
but I will talk for a second about having a romantic partner during an engineering degree. It is tough. Now, if you had a pie chart of life, I'd say the engineering degree is gonna take up anywhere between 25 and 75% of your waking hours and energy. Some days you can get away with doing nothing and some days you gotta work from dawn to dusk and sleep in the lab. So it really comes down to how you wanna spend your time. If you're a diehard like drone racer and love playing video games and hanging out with your friends, that's fine, you can do all that, but you probably won't have the time for a partner. On the other side of things, a partner can really help you through your engineering degree. My girlfriend would be kind enough to come cook for me when I had those really busy engineering days, which was a huge help. So ultimately how you spend your time is up to you. But if you're in the degree, I highly recommend highly prioritizing it because you're spending a lot of time and money towards it. Now, the final question I have today is for you. What engineering field do you want to get into? If you're still considering, this video outlines all of the biggest engineering fields, what they do, and their salaries. So go check it out or forever be cursed with not knowing who makes the most money. Now, thanks for watching and happy engineering, everybody.